Hello, I'm Bill Wade, a captain with the Tampa Fire Department. I'm standing here 120 feet below the water tower on Himes Avenue in West Tampa. We're here today with the advanced rope class being conducted by the Tampa Fire Department. This is an advanced rope class and firefighters from all over the state have come here to take part in this class. These firefighters have already been trained in rope construction, how to tie off to certain buildings and certain structures with, with some basic knots. Some of these firefighters may have even in previous classes actually repelled out of such things as helicopters. For the next three days, we're gonna follow along as they participate in this class. For example, today we're here at the water tower. On the second day, we're gonna go to the Barnett Tower. This is the 41 story high rise in downtown Tampa. From there, these firefighters are gonna repel from the top all the way to the ground. Each rappel should take about 15 minutes. The third day should be the, one of the most interesting days. On the third day, these firefighters are gonna do what's called traversing. They're gonna send a rope from the Barnett Tower to the NCNB building, the Nations Bank Plaza, which is approximately a 35-story building. It's the round building in downtown Tampa. From there, they're gonna send another line from the Nations Bank Plaza across to the University of Tampa Park. Then these firefighters, one at a time, are gonna practice going from the Barnett Tower to the Nations Bank Plaza Tower and then to the University of Tampa Park. It should be an interesting class. Follow along. We hope you learned something from this class. Here on Himes Avenue, the first thing that must be done is to gain access to the top of the water tower by setting up a regular fire department ground ladder at the base of the tower, the firefighters are able to access another ladder that is attached to the side of the tower and will take them straight up in the air, 120 feet, to the catwalk. As the firefighters anchored their ropes to this tower, we asked lead instructor Chris Stark why it's so important for these firefighters to practice here at the water tower prior to going to the large buildings in downtown Tampa. Okay, the reason we picked the water tower for the first day is a lot of these people have not had a class in a number of months and basically this is just a warm up for them because the buildings that we're going to be doing tomorrow are considerably higher and they, I want to make sure they're comfortable with the racks and the equipment that we're going to be using. Um, we don't want the first time for them to realize that they're not comfortable with it or competent with it is 600 feet over the street. So we bring them out here, we pull a little bit of weight on the rope to simulate the added rope length on the other building. Uh, as far as this traverse line, the reason we have this set up is because we're using some specialized equipment, namely a dynamometer, which is an instrument that's used to measure the tension pulled on the system. When we do the high lines downtown, we have to have a certain, we have to have about 700 pounds of tension pulled on the system. And without the dynamometer, you can't determine how much how much weight you're pulling. The way this works is just more or less a high high tech fish scale. You anchor it here, pull weight on it here, and you get a reading on the meter, on the instrument itself, and it's measured off in 100 pound increments. Uh, the, red, the red needle, that'll, that'll travel with the white needle and remain if, even if the white needle comes back, and that tells you what the highest load was that you placed on it. We have it hooked up now, it's on about 200 pounds, and the main reason I set it up here is so that they can see how it works, because again, a lot of them have never been exposed to it. There's only two or three of them that have even seen them before. The rope rescue technicians attending this class not only need to know various ways of setting up rope systems and how to come down on those systems, they also have to know how to go up or ascend the ropes. Well, what's the practical purpose of maybe having rope rope in a real situation? Well, in this particular yeah. case, there's, there's places where a ladder won't reach or uh, you won't be able to actually scale the wall, and there are situations where you're going to have to actually go up the rope, ascend the rope. And that's what he's doing right now. He's actually climbing the rope. Um, it's a different technique, uses different types of equipment. I guess they're talking him through how to get up there. You have, it's basically when you do this, it's all legs. The whole trick on this is use your legs. If you use your hands, you'll never make it. You'll wear yourself out. As mentioned earlier, 
This day's class was meant to make sure that students were familiar with the equipment they were going to use over the next couple of days. When, you, when you're going on this, especially out there at the wall, this here is what you need to concentrate, is working these pins. Not work, don't worry about that. You can just about let go of this and hold on to right here and just mm -hmm. control yourself with these. And that's what that's what you need to work on because if you're ever getting a, a quick fall by trying to grab hold of this, all you're gonna do is burn your hand. With the student and the equipment ready, it's time to go over the side and down the rope. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what to do that right hand. Put your thumb around on the right hand around that carabiner. Okay, don't just, even touch the rope. And just hold on to, no, you can hold on to your rope, let's slide to your hand, but just hold on to that carabiner. That way you won't get it up around the rack. There you go, just like that. Like that? Yeah. Then you're for sure not gonna let it slide up and get caught. Okay, right. then just control yourself with your left hand. Either you pull down on the pins to increase or push up to slow yourself down. The rappel rack, seen here close up, is what the rope technician uses to control his speed as he comes down the rope. By pushing up on those bars, friction is put on the rope, thereby controlling the speed of the rope as it passes through the bars. The orange rope is the primary rappel rope. The blue rope is a safety line that is separate from the rappel system and is used to catch the rappeller should the primary rope fail. All of this rigging and practice was to prepare the students for the real challenge that laid ahead. Hello, this is day two of the advanced rope class. I'm standing on top of the Barnett Tower, the 42-story building in downtown Tampa. As you can see behind me, operations have already begun. A gentleman is already beginning his descent down the outside of the 42-story building. It's quite a view from up here, quite windy also. We're going to be talking to some of the people who go down the outside of this building as well as some of the other instructors that are conducting today's program. What we have set up here is uh, a rappel line, the red line, the rappel line, 600 feet to the ground, it's anchored off here with the window washing clean, runs up to the davit, we did a four to one wrap on the davit, and the rope runs over the side to the ground. That's the main rappel line. Blue line is a safety line. It's a set, uh, seven sixteenths. It's running through a monter hitch, and it's also attached to the person going down the line. Should this rappel line fail, this safety line will catch the person, preventing them from falling to the ground. Okay, is this the first time you've ever done anything this big? Yeah, this is the highest. What was it like, man? Yeah, it was a trip. It was a good rush. Uh, wasn't too bad. Just it's like any other rappel, just a little bit higher. But uh, it went down pretty good. No problem. Um, good view. Uh, the rack was, was going real good. Not too much heat. Kept spinning around a little bit. But it, was, it was good. How long did it take? I think about 10 minutes. Now let's take a couple of minutes and watch and listen as one of the firefighters prepares her 600-foot descent down the outside of the Barnett Tower. You're so light, you know? Yeah. Years ago, you might be able to add it up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. 
Tight on belay, please. I'll pull up some slack and get you some. You gonna take me out anymore as far as this? No, I'm done. This is it. I'm gonna this be this it. close to the yes, building all this time. It, it'll work out better once you get further. It's just right up close up here. Just you have plenty of room. Now. There you go. We got you. Hey. When you get to the bottom, just get out in the street and wave, okay? Right. Take uh, your uh, Bobby is with you, please. Okay. Bring him up real quick. Okay. Have fun. Smile. Let go of your right hand. Yeah. Yeah. Let go of your right hand and just lift the rack, dude, because you'll burn a hole through your gloves. Yeah. Looking good, Charlie. Thanks. Oh, boy. Yeah. Smile, now. Hey, <laughs> smile. You're paying, you're just supposed to be fun. Yeah, come back up. Smile. Yeah. You're on your own. This is the E ticket. Shown here is one of the members of the class controlling the blue safety line. The person going down the outside of the building is actually controlling their own descent. Should something happen to the equipment or the repeller, this person could easily stop the repel by pulling on this backup line. Okay, what, what's the idea behind taking this course? Uh, to just familiarize yourself with the heights. Uh, down here we get a little more height experience than we do in uh, upstate Jacksonville. Uh, bigger buildings, more of them. And uh, we like to learn what, as much as we can from Chris, he's a good teacher. Uh, taught us just about everything we know about this. Good deal, so you've taken some classes before in this subject? Yeah, we've taken them, uh, you know, Cal, all his courses he's offered, we've been down here before, I believe we were on the building, directly behind us here. And this is our first time on this building, but pretty good ride. It's a good experience out of it. Thank you. Tell me, tell me the idea. What's the purpose behind doing this? Well, uh, mainly just to uh, build up confidence. Uh, there's not a lot of departments such as mine that uh, you can get any height out of. We have, the highest thing that we have may be five to seven stories high. Okay. So here we can come down and do 600 foot, you know, right around 600 foot, which we'd never be able to do in our department. And if you're building a team, it gives you a little bit more self-confidence working together as a team. As can be seen, the windy conditions did provide some extra excitement by pushing the repellers away from the building. To speed up the operation, ropes were rigged from the 30th story of the CNS Bank building. Each repel was taking about 10 to 15 minutes, and the students wanted to practice their skills from this height at least a couple of times this day. Okay, now don't feed the rope. You should be able to control the rope with the bars. Okay? It's not easy to feed the rope. <laughs> You start moving, eventually what you want to end up doing is letting go of the rope completely. Can I let go of this one? You can, but what you could do is with both hands, grab the bars and just slide them up and down. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on to the rope. Okay, okay. You're going, you're not popping a bar, right? No, I'm Okay, okay, it good. Down. There you go. Day three of the advanced rope class, I'm standing on top of the Nations Bank Plaza, approximately a 35-story building here in downtown Tampa. As you can see by the activities going on behind me, operations also have begun for this day. For today, the people are going to repel from the top, or I should use the word traverse. They're going to go from building to building, from the top of the Barnett Tower, a 42-story building, to the top of the Nations Bank Plaza, 
and then from here they're going to take another rope and go down 35 stories across the Hillsborough River, some 450 feet down to the University of Tampa Park. It should be an interesting day. To stretch the rope across the street from rooftop to rooftop, the ropes were lowered to the ground, one rope from each building, then tied together at street level and hoisted back up. It took a couple of hours to get the ropes ready for the traverse. While the work progressed on the systems, we asked a couple of the instructors and students what they hoped to get out of today's session. Uh, I just see the confidence builder more than anything. Uh, you get more confidence, you know, if you can go off a building like this. Going home last night, I was looking at some of the buildings and it's like they're nothing, you know, compared to what we just went through. Uh, traverse, uh, worst case scenario, we could probably use it to get some people off a building if there was ever a problem. But, other means, you know. but it's, it's just really more of an experience of the rigging, doing the rigging. All the rigging, the anchors are basically the same for any rappels. You, your anchors are your main points, and if you get good at setting anchors up, then uh, that's half of it. So I see the, the rigging is probably the most practical part, and uh, we're getting a lot of that today. But the more you practice it, the better you're going to be in a, in a working situation. You're going to have to know your knots, like the back of your hand, and the more practice you get, With the rope systems in place and double checked, lead instructor Chris Stark gave final instructions prior to anyone using the traverse rig. Check each other out, check your harnesses, make sure you got an overhand knot here, 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 if this is this, this type of harness, just check each other, right? You guys that don't have the back ring attachment point, there's a pickoff strap and two steel beaners hanging from the pulleys. Two steel beaners go to the front. Uh, if you have a back attachment point, the pickoff strap attaches to the back. If you don't, attach it to the webbing on your belt. We need at least two points of attachment. Don't depend on just the D-ring, okay? Yeah. Make sure you got helmet and gloves on. Take anything loose off. Sunglasses, if you don't have a strap, take them off. Okay. You guys get out on the line, just sit down and enjoy the ride. Don't be kicking your feet up over the rope and doing no acrobatic stuff. We don't need that. All right, it's just going to shock load the system. People that are doing the, the rack, go as smoothly as you can. Avoid jerking the lines because that's shock loading the system each time you do that. All right, so go as smoothly as possible. Plus the saw. A little bit of slack on the blade. No, hold what you got. Let me get my weight on. Yeah, okay. I got you. Let, it have, let me have a little. Hold what you got. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Before any of the students went over the wall, their gear was fully inspected and last minute instructions were given. Okay, these are your two traverse lines right up here. You've got your pulleys all rigged into that, double pulley system. They're all hooked together. Beaners are locked off. This is just your belay line. This is what we're going to use to lower you over. Another belay line on this side. This is going to bring you over to the building on the other side if you need to uh, get hauled on over that last little bit. Got some prussics and rings here. These are going to just be used to take some of the slack out of the belay line so we don't have too much hanging behind you. Got your harness all checked out. Safety strap in case you have a problem with your uh, D-ring on your harness. It's hooked into your uh, harness on the back. So you should be in good shape. Any questions? We're ready. All right, let's do it. Going a little bit faster race. Right about there. Hold on. Gentlemen up there, they have a flying pants. We ready? We ready. As the students took turns doing each of the operations on the Burnett roof, 
Others waited to receive the traverser on the nation's bank roof and prepare him for the next phase, a trip across the Hillsborough River. How'd it feel going over? It's great. It's a while. It's been a while. With one end anchored to the building and the other to a heavy rescue vehicle down in the park, it was time to head for the ground. Whether they were setting up the rigging, tying the knots, or controlling the traverse, the lessons learned over the past three days will undoubtedly stay with these firefighters for years to come. <laughs>